What's going on guys? This is Ryan with RK Outpost. And when I found this article today, even though it's Huffington Post, I had to use Internet Archive, so I wasn't giving HuffPost any clicks, but it's well worth it going through the hassle because the Rise of Skywalker editor, Marianne Brandon, is answering some questions about mysteries and why they decided to include some things and not others. And when we get to the Emperor Palpatine stuff, it is laughable, her answer. But uh, we'll get to it. Trust me, it's well worth it. Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker editor reveals answers to major mysteries. Or maybe not. Uh, warning, Star Wars spoilers below. Just when you thought you had all the Star Wars mysteries figured out, The Rise of Skywalker comes al along, and now there is another and another and another. In closing out the main nine-film Star Wars storyline, I like how they didn't say the Skywalker saga, because it, it's not the Skywalker saga anymore. The Rise of Skywalker offers surprising reveals. Rey was actually the granddaughter of Emperor Palpatine. But now, fans are left pondering a number of conundrums. Why didn't we learn more about how Palpatine survived? Yeah, why did Rey and Kylo kiss? Also, what's going on in that Janna Lando scene? You've got questions, Marianne Brandon has answers. She's had to keep certain Star Wars secrets for years since she was an editor on 2015's Force Awakens. So she went through this thing here. Um... Here we go, here we go. Oh man, Brandon, oh Jesus. What was Finn trying to tell Rey? Brandon says she wants to leave that up to the audience. If Palpatine was Rey's grandpa, who was her grandma? Or put it another way, who the heck had a relationship with Palpatine? Brandon doesn't know, but she figures someone badass. I'm guessing, uh, I'm guessing behind every evil emperor, there's a bigger, badder evil empress, Brandon said. Of course she did. But those aside, there are plenty of mistakes the editor could shed some light or mysteries Sorry, Freudian slip, the editor could shed some light on. So without further ado, here's some of the answers to your biggest Star Wars questions. Why Rey and Kylo kissed? When Rey and Kylo snogged, it was the kiss heard around the galaxy and those far, far away. The moment made Raylo fans shout for joy and detractors just shout. According to Brandon, there was a lot of back and forth about whether the scene should happen at all, which... If, we've, if we take any of those leaks that have come out the past couple days, we also heard that there. There was a lot of back and forth about it. She cut a lot of different versions about should they, shouldn't they, she said. I always said the movie will tell us whether they should kiss or not. We will know by the time we get to the end of our process if it should happen. And I felt it should, and director J.J. Abrams agreed with me, and other people who saw the film agreed. Brandon praised the performance in the scene, especially the moment Kylo Ren smiles, the first time the character has smiled in three movies. I, I, that is great acting uh, for Adam Driver to be able to smile after Daisy Ridley kisses him. I agree. Great acting. I know it's not for everybody, she says. I know people will wish they hadn't, but this is a film that was never going to please everyone, and I think that the reviews are reflective of that. The things that certain people love, other people hated, and that's the phenomenon of Star Wars. God. Why Kylo died? Another great mystery. After using the Force to heal Rey and getting that infamous smooch, Kylo Ren disappears, but why? Did he die from the wounds incurred in the fight with Palpatine? Was Rey's breath so bad that it killed him? She is British. Maybe there aren't a lot of Tic Tacs in space. According to Brandon, dental hygiene wasn't a factor. And uh, apologies to all my British subscribers out there. I had to. In order to save Rey, Kylo had to give up all that was left of his life force. He got his redemption, I think, in a lovely way. And right after he disappears, Leia disappears. I'd like to think they're together, she said. Oh my god. That's the problem. All these people just force themselves to death in this sequel trilogy. Why we don't hear many details about how Palpatine survived. This is the one. Oh my god, I could not believe this. The opening scenes with Palpatine were tricky in terms of how much of the character's backstory to explain, how much to show of him, and what he wanted, Brandon explained. It's almost like it was inconsistent because you came up with it the last minute and it didn't make any sense. Imagine that. It was kind of a delicate balance and went back and forth a lot about how much we wanted to reveal. Some scenes changed quite a bit the way that we wanted to present it to the audience. In the end, we ended up showing a lot less than we started with. There was, listen to this line, there was originally a little more information about it, what was keeping Palpatine alive, but Brandon said, it seemed to go off topic. Imagine anyone wanting to know how, why, Emperor Palpatine survived his explosion and the Death Star's subsequent explosion in Return of the Jedi. Why would anyone want to know that? It's so off topic. These people are clueless. 
There was so much information in the film and on the characters that we wanted to have an audience concentrate on. I think we felt that we didn't want to clutter the film up with things you didn't need to know about. Yeah, like Poe's spice running backstory, Zori Bliss's part in any of this at all, Janna, an absolutely new character that you introduced for no particular reason. Yeah, I, I would have liked to see a little more of why Palpatine came back and a little less Janna. Yeah, surprising, huh? Why Palpatine lost? <laughs> In the movie, Palpatine says if Rey kills him, his spirit will enter into her, ooh, and he'll win. But she does kill him. So why doesn't he actually win? Also, could Rey have just unplugged that big machine that was keeping Palpatine alive? <laughs> she can't, Brandon said, in suggestion that Palpatine could just be unplugged. She can't kill him in anger. The whole reason Palpatine lost is because Rey didn't strike him down in hate. By ending Palpatine the way she did, reflecting his lightning back at him, Rey was able to avoid playing by Palps' rules. Well, just thank God that he just kept shooting and kept that force lightning and killing him. Good thing, Palpatine. This guy who's managed to survive all this stuff, brought it down the, the, uh, the fall of the Republic, the fall of the Jedi, is able to survive all this time, but he's too stupid to stop shooting himself with lightning. Lucky for our heroes, huh? Why Snoke was revealed to be a clone. Fans have been wondering about former Supreme Leader Snoke's mysterious background since The Force Awakens. Where did he come from? Why does he look the way he does? Has he ever heard the word moisturizer? The Rise of Skywalker finally gives us some answers. A scene showing multiple Snokes held in glass containments seemed to suggest he was a clone used by the Emperor, which Brandon confirms. I just think that came up as a visual effect that we thought would be really fun for an audience to create a visual that would tell the whole story. I believe that's successful. We didn't have to change a lot of dialogue. You just see one shot and you kind of get it. I love stuff like that. We can just have a moment where you, sh where you just get to see something in the background and you go, okay, I totally get that. We didn't have to change a lot of dialogue. So I wonder what that was. Maybe a, a plan that they had in place before he got killed off in The Last Jedi? I don't know, maybe, who knows? Why Rose didn't get a ton of screen time, and we've heard a lot of different things about this. The role of Rose Tico, Kelly Marie Tran, in The Rise of Skywalker is noticeably reduced from The Last Jedi, and that came down to Abrams choosing to tell a different story. There were a lot of characters in the film, again, all these new characters that you introduced. And because J.J. wanted to make this film about a journey of the three main friends and then raise conflict with Kylo Ren, it became very hard to service a lot more characters. She's an important character in the Resistance, and we tried very hard to show that in the film. All 76 seconds worth of her. Funny story, her sister got more screen time in The Last Jedi than Rose did in this movie. I, I was blown away when I heard that, but it's true. And I think we did. But the film just couldn't handle much more character stories. The editor then went on to say she showed Rose a few times at the end of the movie to make sure she was given her due. We all love Rose, Brandon said, and we want to make her character sing, and that's why she's in the end battle. I cut to her a few times in the end because I know she's a fan favorite, and I wanted to show her being involved. Yeah, all the fans out there, all the fans that bought all that Rose Tico merchandise. Now that was actually just Ethan Van Skyver. Uh, what was going on in the scene between Jana and Lando? Um, Lando Calrissian is a smooth guy, that's not up for debate. What can be questioned is what's going on in the scene between him and Janna at the end of the movie. In the scene, Lando helps to, offers to help Janna, a former stormtrooper, find where she came from. At first, it seems sweet. Some interpret it as a fatherly figure offering help. I think that's how the vast majority of everyone saw it. But the internet is where sweet intentions go to die. There are those who think that Lando is hitting on Janna rather than just being a good dude. According to Brandon, get your minds out of the gutter. Well, at least I can agree with her reasoning on this. I don't think it ever occurred to any of us that he was hitting on her. I think it was always fatherly, you know. Help you find your way home. Yeah, it never went that way. And uh, based on all the leaks, we've heard that originally Lando was supposed to be your father. The visual dictionary doesn't quite confirm that. It does go a long way to uh, hinting at it, but it doesn't confirm it. Why there was no Finn Poe. Among the many deaths in The Rise of Skywalker, the demise of Finn Poe, the theory slash fan dream that Finn and Poe would end up in a relationship. Jesus. The idea has been around since The Force Awakens, but Brandon apparently hadn't heard about it until now. Because I'm cutting it together, I'm kind of taking it at face value, not reading it much as an audience. Maybe that's just my nature, I don't know, she said. 
But I think, again, they're best of friends. There's kind of a brotherhood there where they understand each other and they've got each other's backs. As to any future love between the two, that's really up to Lucasfilm and up to Disney if they want to make that sequel. And uh, we, we know that that's never going to happen. Oscar Isaac is not coming back. John Boyega is not coming back. Um, we'd heard that Oscar Isaac specifically blamed the Disney overlords for not allowing that to happen. That's what he said. That's come out in the leaks. That, again, who knows if those are true or not, but it does help confirm it. Um, absolutely insane interview, especially, especially the Palpatine stuff. Why we don't hear details about how Palpatine survived. Because it seemed to go off topic. That is just... That's one of the worst answers I think I could have gotten. You could have just said, no comment. And I think that may have been a better answer. That's what everyone wants to know. There was nobody at the end of Return of the Jedi that thought Palpatine was possibly coming back at all. We do have Dark Empire, the expanded universe story that was written in 1992 that does go in depth and explains how there are clones of Emperor Palpatine, that his body did in fact die, that there were clones that he was able to transfer his essence into, his spirit. However, we don't have any of that in this movie. It was not explained and you don't want to explain it. I think we felt we didn't want to clutter the film up with things you didn't need to know. Typical J.J. Abrams. That is just astounding. That someone would just say that and think that that's an acceptable answer. But I don't know. Maybe I'm being a little too hard. I want to know what you guys think. Would you have liked... Listen, this movie's going to suck any explanation to come up with. But at least it could have gone better towards it. Like, if you had tried to explain that it was exactly that Dark Empire story, at least that'd be okay. Well, at least Anakin actually did kill Palpatine. His spirit was released and somehow he's able to transfer his essence into another body. Listen, I could believe some of that. It might make it a little better. This movie is going to suck either way. But you got, you have to do some explaining when you bring back a character like that. Maybe I'm out of my mind. You guys let me know in the comments section below. I want to hear your thoughts. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, share this ridiculous interview and this video out there, and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching, everyone. And a huge shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my P.O. Box and my Patreon as well. I'll talk to you guys later.